world of fun and fantasy and ever-changing views and computer terminology. Commodore is news. Are you keeping up with the Commodore? Because the Commodore is keeping up with you. Are you keeping up with the Commodore? Because the Commodore is keeping up with you. Hi, I'm Graham. Welcome back to the Commodore Cave. It's already been a week since I released the last video on the surprise addition to the cave, the Amiga 4000T. But since it was released, there's been a big response to it. So I figured I'd do this one now for a quick update. And more importantly, 250 new subscribers. So I welcome you all to the channel. And if you'd like to see a video on one of the other 40 or 50 Commodore computers in here, I suggest you have a look at the library in that link below. I've managed to very briefly have a bit of a poke around with the Amiga 4000T. Nowhere near as much time as I'd like to have spent on it. But I found a few things out about it and I have made some progress. And one of the things I learned absolutely stunned me. I'll share that with you shortly. But before that, I'd like to address some of the comments that have been made in the past week. There have been quite a few comments made in the video, and I thank you for that, so I'll address some of them now. A few people have asked if there's any battery damage. Didn't have the Varta battery, they had the uh, lithium coin battery. So that's one thing I don't need to worry about. On the upside, it is the original battery. On the downside, it's soldered in place. I really don't want to take a soldering iron to this computer. I'd like to leave it as it is. Now apparently the 4000T will allow another battery to be placed alongside the coin battery. So I'm thinking about doing that, leaving the old one in place and putting in a couple of AA rechargeables instead. And that should keep the clock running. It does indeed appear to be a German keyboard. I'm not surprised. And I've had a few comments left about what the name of those dots above the letters are on the keyboard. I'm informed they're called Amlorts. Now that you've heard me pronounce it that way, I bet you wish I just stuck with the term accent. This one is Z and Y are exactly where they should be. And yes, that's true. When I press the Z key, quite right, it does show a Y. And while we're on that topic, I found out why the manuals are in such great condition. Well, it's quite simple really. They're all in German, every word. So uh, they're going to stay in new condition because I can't speak a word of it. A few people picked up on the error that I called the Picasso card an audio card. But I have been talking about the Megamix music card which had been sitting alongside it. And so I had that term in my mind. Also had a comment about the face here missing off the floppy disk drive. I actually did print one up on my 3D printer like that. Uh, didn't really work, doesn't fit. And from a box of tricks, I dug out this one. Uh, right size, but the buttonhole's incorrect. So I'm still on lookout for one of those. If anyone knows where there is one, please email me a message. And this comment was to the effect that the A4000T was not rare at all. Well, I beg to differ. Unless you're talking about prototypes, commercially released computers, there weren't very many of these 4000Ts released and there's even less of them available today. Blinky Bill, says his 4000T keyboard comes with a full-size DIN, unlike mine with the mini DIN. So it looks like they did come in two versions. And this was an interesting comment left by Far Too Reckless, who mentioned his late dad and the history that he'd had with Commodore. Thank you for that. El Gorpo noted it was a pretty slick case. Well, the case itself was actually damaged a decade ago when it was shipped from Germany to Australia. There is a dent in the back corner. It's not particularly noticeable, and I think I'll just leave it there as a mark of honor for it. This comment was about the fast boot up time, and I've got to say, it really is fast. It's so nice when I do a reboot, and within a few seconds, I'm back at the workbench. A few suggestions about some essential updates for it. I think it's got sufficient memory in it. I'm not interested in getting a video toaster, plus the prices of those are absolutely ridiculous when you can find them, but I would like to put a network card in there. My 4000 desktop is running an X-Surf. Quite pleased with that. If anyone's got any recommendations though, I would love to hear about them. Am I running p.os? Not quite sure what that is. There is a p.os on the computer. Haven't worked out yet what it is or how to run it. Even got a comment from Italy. 
country I visited just last year. Thanks for that. Do I plan to upgrade to OS 3.2? I've got to say I'm not really convinced whether it would be a good thing to upgrade this one or not. I know 3.2 takes it to the next level. I'm not sure at this point I want to go there, so I'll have to look into that a lot more. Anyone with 3.2, love to hear from you. This one sold his 4000T a couple of years ago for only $2,000. I can tell you, it didn't pay a lot more than that for this computer. Why is the processor only running at 4 MHz? I don't know. Speaking of which, a few people commented on how Sysinfo reported a slower speed than expected. But literally on the spur of the moment, I loaded Sysinfo and just hit the go button. Didn't bother looking at any of the settings on it. But Stephen White gave me a useful clue, commenting that the data cache was turned off. D cache turned on. And we'll do a speed test. and a slightly different result. Joseph Phillips says I'm a true custodian, and I really like that. I try and use every computer here on a regular basis. I was just working with the Max computer this week, and the week before that, the Amiga 2000. And another 3997 apparently likes my accent. I don't have an accent. But I do read all the comments, and I thank you for them. If you do have any ideas, suggestions, or other comments, please leave them below. They make these videos much more interesting. And it's good to know that I can share my appreciation of these amazing computers with others as well. If you're still watching at this point, how about clicking that like button now? It really does help the channel and it promotes with other people interested in Commodore computers. Well, what did I achieve this week? The very first thing I did before anything else was to back up every bit of software on that computer onto this thumb drive so that I can always recover if I need to. A bit of insurance. The Prisma Megamix is a music card. It's not an audio card. It means it does one thing and does it really well. It plays music, including modern MP3s. And it takes care of the music itself. And while it's doing that, you can use other applications on the computer. Now I've had the Prisma Megamix on my 4000 desktop for a few years and I really like it. But I recall I had a few technical challenges to get it actually working properly. It wasn't really intuitive. So to assist me to get it going on the tower, I had to pull the desktop 4000 out, try and remember the way I'd done it in the first place. As you can see, it looks a bit like spaghetti there at the moment. For a quick easy test, I'm just using these basic Logitech speakers so I can try on each output and see if I can find the music. It gets a little confusing regarding outputs because we have these, we have the mega mix down here with four, and we also have a couple more down here alongside the VGA card. I'm just going to use the default Prisma Play that comes with the card. Gives us this very basic program. And I'm going to play it from the USB drive music okay let's just pick one that I don't get a strike for maybe this one oh. Words of wisdom, let it be. okay sound so the card works But included with the package was this rather old, beaten up, but usable USB mouse. Then I got to wondering, what if I plugged in my cordless USB mouse from my Windows computer into the Amiga 4000T? Would it work? We've got two USBs. That's the mouse dongle. And now, with the cordless mouse plugged in, initially it's a bit sluggish. But after a few seconds, it seems to warm up and then it responds perfectly well. Well, left click works. And right click works. Perfectly well. Then I thought, what about the Bluetooth keyboard? Would that work? One way to find out. Cordless keyboard. And it's working. 
the original wired keyboard and controller work perfectly well with these plugged in. So I now have the choice of which one I want to use. Maybe I'm the only one that didn't know a modern USB mouse and keyboard would work on this computer, but it does and it does it well. Even the color matches the computer. When you look at the price being asked for replacement keyboards, this could actually be a really viable option. And this is not an expensive set. It was under $50. Will it work with other models? I don't know. A week in and I'm loving the 4000T. One word describes it, exciting. Like many of you, I made the jump to the IBM computers in the mid 1990s. They were the standard at the time. But seeing this computer now, I really think it did genuinely have the potential to take Commodore into the next decade. It's just such a shame it came out so late. So keep an eye out, I'm going to follow the comments and I'll make another video in a few weeks time when I've got some more to talk about. I hope you found this video interesting. If you did, make sure you give me a thumbs up or a like or better still, leave a comment or better still, subscribe. Thanks for watching. Until next time, from the Commodore Cave, see ya. Are you keeping up with the Commodore? Because the Commodore is keeping up with you.